This is the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. Oh, so good. For the Atlanta show on Saturday night at Budweiser Stage, she is absolutely incredible uh i showed up nice and early so i wanted to be there for the opener but instead uh i met this lovely couple from the united kingdom and ended up just sitting down and having drinks with them right up until alanis came out and they were there to see alanis they were there to see alanis so um their names were paul and dash absolutely lovely so we started chatting with them and uh i said so what brought you here and um the wife goes, Alanis, it's it's his favorite band. He, oh. had, he had never never seen Alanis before. Like, I had to bring him. I was like, oh, that's so cool. And he goes, yeah, it was actually my birthday. My wife surprised me. I go, w- what do you mean? So on Thursday, uh, she handed him six envelopes for his birthday and said, um, you can open one of these each day over the course of the next six days. Uh, we are going on a flight somewhere tonight. She goes, you get to open the first envelope at Heathrow. Here's what oh, you wow. need to pack. We're going to a warm destination. It's like, what? Okay. So they pack, they go to the he airport. Put all his Hawaiian shirts in the, in, in <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. bag. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, get to the, they get to the airport, and uh, she hands him an envelope, opens it up. It's like tickets to Toronto. Right, and he's like, oh. He's like, we're going to Toronto. He's Great. Like, I thought we were going to the Bahamas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they get to Toronto. Uh, they get to the hotel. They were staying at Hotel X, which is like right across from Ooh, Budweiser Stage. Perfect nice. location. And then on the day of the concert, she hands him an envelope, opens it up. It's Alanis tickets. Alanis is his favorite artist. He has not ever seen her. So he's super excited. Oh, this is so fun. So then that takes us to when we meet them at the lounge. And I'm like eating popcorn now. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's next? And she's like, well, I, I can't tell you because he's right here. And then he opens an envelope. It's like, <laughs> you're going to meet a Toronto radio host that you don't know. <laughs> And you're going to be fast friends. <laughs> and you get to take a selfie. And he's like, wow, these surprises really dropped off. <laughs> She's like, I spent all the money on the Alanis tickets. <laughs> so he uh, smartly excused himself to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, I got to find out, well, like, what are the right. rest of the surprises? And then she told me, like, okay, well, tomorrow we're going to go to Niagara Falls, book, like, the Maid of the Mist, a helicopter tour. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, fantastic, right? And I made a suggestion for a winery. Shout out two sisters. She ended up taking him there. I just, and I would like, they had the best time. Then at the concert, I saw him up on the big screen. He got put on the screen, like, no while he way. was rocking out. I was like, that's our boy, Paul and Dash. And um, anyway, we, we swapped numbers and all that. And they had the best time. And I, I was just so touched by it. I thought, what is, I was like, you were the ultimate wife. Like, what a sweet thing you did for your husband's I birthday. I actually really, really like this idea. I wish somebody did something like that for me. But now I'm like, I'm not even this thoughtful to come up with it myself. Like, you made like a little scavenger hunt with the surprises and the I love an envelope. Now I want to know what's in four, five, and six. Uh, we want to know what is the most thoughtful thing someone has ever done for you, or maybe the most thoughtful thing you've ever done for someone, a la Paul and Dash, my new friends from the UK. Uh, let's go to Jim and Scarborough. I did it for my wife. She had just started a new job. She was 29. I arranged for a vacation down to the Bahamas without her knowing about it in January. I had to reach out to her boss without even knowing him. Made arrangements with my in-laws to take our two children for the week. Also made arrangements for the dogs to be put into a kennel for the week. This was arranged about four months in advance. About three days before the event, she inadvertently admitted that she had a luncheon date on the day we were supposed to leave. Oh, no. So I had to reach out to that person and say, she's not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jim, so much planning. And then also keeping it a secret for yeah. that long. That's not easy to do. Very mm-hmm. thoughtful. Irene from Innisfil, uh, what was the most thoughtful thing for you? So my husband and I, we were in a long-distance relationship for years. And when I finally was able to bring him to Canada, he took me to Montreal to this amazing hotel. And by surprise, he took me to a helicopter ride on my birthday, as well as a horse ride back. Oh, wow. Wow. A horse ride back? That's incredible. Like from Montreal to Toronto? (laughs) From Toronto to Montreal. (laughs) That's a... You must be some kind of cowboy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Irene, thank you so much for sharing that story. We love it. Thank you. Irene's just going down the 401. Clip, clap, clip, clap, clip, clap, clip, clap. <laughs> How do you not fall in love with a cowboy? <laughs> How do you not? <laughs> uh, let's go to Jan in Grand Valley. So what is the most thoughtful thing someone's ever done for you or you've done for someone? Your story about Dash and Paul made me think about my husband's 50th birthday. Okay. When I surprised him. Um, with Chinese food and in a fortune cookie amongst 
many friends, he opened his fortune cookie and it said, you're going to Vegas, baby. And oh, my gosh. To, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, so love that. So, it would have been amazing if after he opened it and he's, he goes, boys trip, and then runs out of there. Uh, Jen, that's yeah, an amazing. I would have had the sad emoji on my face. <laughs> uh, Jen, what a great story. Thank you for sharing it with us. No problem. Thank you. Have a great day, you too. From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Have you ever thought about how much weddings cost you in your entire lifetime? I I don't mean your own wedding or, you know, what it costs to get divorced or anything like that. I'm talking about being a guest at a wedding. So this includes, you know, what you gift the couple, but also all the other costs associated around a wedding. So maybe you're grabbing a hotel. Maybe you had to buy a new suit. Maybe you're renting a tux. Maybe it was a destination wedding and you had to snag a plane ticket. So... There's a story out that is breaking down the average amount we spend per wedding, and they extrapolate that over an entire lifetime. And you know me, I love numbers. So this is right up my alley. So this story says that in general, we spend about $700 per wedding on all things, the gift, the outfit, the everything. Um, And that we start attending weddings at about, let's just say 18 for the sake sake of argument. And let's say the average age is 80, which is close to where it is. So if you start going to weddings at 18, and let's say you go to three a year, you live till 80, that means you're going to spend $130,000 in your lifetime on being a wedding guest. Um, Bossman Blur, what do you spend? Let's talk about the gift. What do you give someone at a wedding? We usually try to cover the uh, the plate, so the meal. Okay. So between 150 and 200 for each of us. So the 400 for the for So you're my going wife with Karen, and you're doing 400. And because by by the time you're attending, you know what, you know, you've chosen your meal, you know what it's looking like. Right. Is it a buffet? Is it a good meal? Right. Cash bar, open, open bar. bar. Give them more cash. So <laughs> Late night food station, I'm paying a little extra for that. Absolutely. Fish? No, take it off 20. <laughs> <laughs> if it's an open bar, I'm definitely giving less. Right. Or sorry, a cash bar. I'm for definitely sure. giving less. Nicolina, who's in for Steph this week, um, what are you gifting at a wedding? I'd say at least 100, sometimes 150, sometimes 200. Depends on how close I am to the couple. But I'm I'm younger, so I feel like I can justify. We're trying to save right now. We're trying to, like, build our life. That's so, a great point. Yeah. Is, can I ask you how old you are? Yeah, 24. I had 24. to think about that for a think second. About that. That, that's pretty good because I definitely gave less when I, was, when I was in my 20s as well. And the older you get, I think the expectation is there that you give more. If you're super close, like my best friend's wedding, I give him $501. Wow. We always give an extra one. It's like good luck in Indian culture. A wedding where I'm like, I kind of know the bride. I've met the groom once. I'm like, you're getting like a couple hundred bucks maybe. That's what you're getting from me. Okay, so with all this money, here's the final thought I'm going to leave you with. 130000 in your lifetime at weddings, that's great. But might I suggest this? Stop going to weddings. Right now, okay? If you stop going to weddings, if you've never attended a wedding, you take that $2,100 each year that you were going to spend as a wedding guest, you invest it. <laughs> Let's say you get a modest return of 5%. You can do more if you had a good investment guy. Over 62 years, from 18 to 80, that $130,000, that would be $866,000. Pooja may love love, but Gurdeep, he loves cash. <laughs> The Pooja and Gurdeep Podcast. From 98.1 CHFI. This is the Pooja and Gurdeep Podcast. is Alessia Cara's brand new song, Dead Man. And oh, look who's in here in the CHFI studios with me in Pooja's seat. It's Alessia Cara. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. <laughs> uh, that is an amazing song, by the way. I've been listening to it like nonstop on repeat for the last two days. It is moody. It is smoky. I love that drum beat and the horns. And then your voice comes in and it just turns it into this like sexy retro old school James Bond vibe. I don't know if I'm you're picking up what I'm how I'm describing it, but this <laughs> I've is heard a, people say that. Before. Okay, the good. James I'm Bond glad. Thing? Yeah, yeah. Glad I'm not alone. Um, <laughs> this is clearly a new sound for you, and I love it. How did you get here? How did I get here? Um, I think for me, for like you know, when I was writing this project, I really wanted it to sound like different uh, 
areas of, of music that I really love. And so this song was really reminiscent of, you know, the jazz music that I love to listen to, the hip hop music I love to listen to. And I just wanted to touch upon that because I feel like I've never really done that before in my music. I've never really made a song like this. And I always have wanted to because I don't know, this genre is just really prominent in like my playlist that I listen to. So yeah, I don't know. I just wanted it to feel like a lot of the music that I love and um, we stumbled upon it. And I just found that it was really natural to me. It just felt like my writing over it felt natural. My my voice, you know, atop this, like the bed of this music just felt natural to me. So it was fun. Well, if your pending fourth studio album is more of this, like I am here for it because I love Dead Man. Um, Thank you. Speaking of that fourth full-length album coming out soon. What can you tell us about it? What can you say? And can you tell us when it drops? Um, I can't tell you when it drops yet. Mm -hmm. And I I can't really say much about it, unfortunately. Um, But I will say that to me, it is like my, it's my favorite music that I've ever made. It's my favorite collection of songs I've ever made. And I hope that people feel that way too. Um, Yeah. And I'm just really excited about it. I know I can't, I'm sorry that I can't say much, but yeah. Listen, I'm very excited. We appreciate a little cloak and dagger. We do that a lot here. So, um, Alessia Cara, I've had so many people mispronounce my name in my life, which I kind of understand. Gurdip Alawalia, it's not easy. However, Alessia Cara, you have won Junos, you've won Grammys, um, you have literally billions of streams. I'm not even exaggerating that. <laughs> do people still mispronounce your name? Because I know that was a thing when you broke out. Oh, yeah, 100%. Of course. I don't know why, because I, my, uh, so Kara is actually a shortened version of my last name. And I did that, you know, in hopes that it would simplify it for people, but still they get it wrong. <laughs> it, they always say like, Kara, Alicia Kara, Alicia Kara, Sarah. Whatever. There's Sarah. So, Sarah, I've heard Alicia Sarah before. Okay, at this point, if someone's introducing you with an interview with that, I just put the headphones down and walk out of the room. <laughs> yeah, at that like, point. thank you so much. Thanks. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So <laughs> it's when, fine. Like when it. you um when you burst onto the scene with here back in 2015, you were what 19 years old? I was yes, 18 or 19. 18, 19 18 years or 19. old. Yeah, I can't really remember. So you're you're 19. 28 years old now, and if you could go back and and talk to Alessia at that age. Uh, is there anything you would say to her? Um, I mean, there's a lot of things I would say. I think the the biggest thing that comes to mind is I would just tell her or tell myself <laughs> to stay as present as possible and enjoy it as much as possible, even though, you know, it was hard to stay present because everything was happening to me so quickly. And it was the first time I'd gone through any of that kind of thing before. So I, I remember just being kind of swept up in it and kind of nervous and kind of just going through the motions without really processing. And I I think looking back now, I wish that I would have like just tried to stay in the moment as much as I could and not, you know, uh, be so worried or so scared, you know, but I guess you kind of have to go through that too to get to this place of understanding. So I am kind of grateful that I went through things the way that I did, but yeah, maybe I would have told myself maybe to stay a little bit more present and enjoy and not worry so much. That feels like really good advice to your former self or just good advice really to anyone, anywhere, anytime. Um, is there is there one non music thing that you haven't done that you really want to do like a bucket list item like run a marathon or learn a language or climb a mountain like what's on what's on your list? Ooh, I, I would love to learn more languages. I think the idea of language is so fascinating to me. Um, so I would love to like learn Spanish or I was trying to learn Japanese for a second. It's really hard, <laughs> but I, I know a couple sentences. So why Japanese? I don't know. I just I just love that culture. I think it's so fascinating and. I don't know. I just always really connected with Japanese culture. I think it's awesome and so colorful and just really, I don't know, interesting to me. And I, the language is so cool to me. But I, yeah, I'm not even anywhere near being fluent in that. I know like two sentences. See, that's my, do you want to say them for us? What are they? <laughs> um, I could say, O te arai wa doku desuka, which is, I believe, where's the bathroom? Um, nice. And I could say, uh, Hajime mashite. How dare you? No, what does that uh, mean? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can say, wait, what was the other thing I just said? Uh, Hajime mashite, watashi wa Alessia des, which is, um, how are you, I believe? Nice to meet you. My name is Alessia, okay. I think. That is two sentences more of Japanese than I know, so you're already, Honestly, you're already doing yeah, very well. I'm basically there. I'm sure, for sure. <laughs> um, you may or may not know we are giving away like a ton of Taylor Swift tickets all summer here on oh, CHFI. Cool. Have you seen... The Eras Tour, or do you plan to check it out when it's in Toronto in November? Is it in Toronto in November? I didn't even know that. It is. I thought si- I missed it. For six shows. It, what? Yeah. 
Where and, have I been? <laughs> if you're Alessia Carr, I feel like you could probably get yourself tickets. I would actually love to. I was going to say I missed it because I've, I've been like traveling everywhere the last year writing this album and finishing it. And so I literally thought that she already played Toronto. I was like, I missed the no. Eras tour. No way. Okay, well, I absolutely have to go see it. I <laughs> really, really do want to go see it because it looks insane. I love that we're breaking news to you. you no, you really are. Honest to God. Because I actually <laughs> wanted to start a campaign slash petition to like get you up on stage with Taylor to do like a little duet when she's here for the Eras tour. Oh my God, that would be like amazing. How, a full circle moment. How too. awesome would that, I mean the fit, like the, I was at Ed Sheeran last year when like Shawn Mendes came up and the place just went nuts. I feel like if you came out with Taylor, would it would crazy. just bring the roof down. I mean the roof's probably already going to be, well it'll be closed. I was going to say, I feel like she's got that covered. The roof is definitely yeah. off already. <laughs> I don't think she needs me to, to let that happen, but honestly that'd be so cool. Um, yeah. Last one for you here. It's kind of a two part question. Um, first part is, do you have a go-to karaoke song? Honestly, there are a few. I would say any Destiny's Child song is nice. is pretty much a go-to. But I need a partner because there's like three parts. I can't I can't carry it all on my back. Like I'll, I need... I'll be your Michelle, your Kelly. Please, that's cool. Yes. I'm assuming you're going to be Beyonce. Obviously. I mean, I don't have to be. I love them all. So like, if you want to take the Beyonce, <laughs> I'm totally fine to do the Kelly Michelle verses for sure. We do some bills, bills, bills. Some no, no, no. Bills, yes. Why bills, are all their bills. songs one word repeated three <laughs> times? Not, <laughs> yeah, not quite that's sure. That's so true. Yeah. Have Very you ever true. been in a karaoke bar and like someone starts singing one of your songs and like they don't know you're there? Um, that hasn't happened. Well. I've I've definitely seen my songs at karaoke bars before, like as options. And like sometimes if I'm with my friends, they'll put it on for fun and sing to me, which is always fun and embarrassing. <laughs> but um, I haven't heard anyone singing it. I'll hear my song like in public, like at cafes and stuff that I'm in. And then I feel very uncomfortable that they're going to notice it's me. And then, like, you know, I'm like, I shouldn't be enjoying this too much because then it looks like I'm cocky. But then I shouldn't like seem like I'm not enjoying it because then it's like she doesn't, you know, so it's always a... A difficult You're thing. Like, what is the proper demeanor for this <laughs> yeah, out-of-body moment? I have no idea. Yeah, I still don't know. <laughs> Alessia Cara, Dead Man is out now. It is so, so good. Um, Thank you. We cannot wait for the fourth full-length studio album. Uh, you are a delight. I love how introspective and thoughtful you are with your answers. Thank you for oh, thank you. stopping by the Pooja and Gurdip show. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. So good. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.